Well, there it is, live zero colon zero zero four five. Good morning, Jeff. What's going on up there in Napa? Oh, you already told me it's kind of gloomy, kind of yeah, crappy. Yeah, kind of gloomy. We got rain coming in today. Um, Dang. Not sure exactly what time, but it looks like it could be arriving around noonish. Um, around so when? Twelve noon. Okay. You know, perfect. All right. Perfect. Right in the middle of the day. You know, screw things up just just nicely. And that'll bleed into tomorrow. So you know that'll mess up two days but at least uh i'll be in the studio yeah uh you know doing some uh in art and art uh project. i think a lot of these players don't have any idea that you actually have another life you have a secret life of being yeah. um someone who deals in metal and fire yeah and uh and artistic uh yeah yeah, yeah. So I've got a art studio with, uh, you know, that we uh, I do steel sculpture. Uh, I used to do custom custom work railings and all that as well, and I just I don't do that anymore because that requires a very large, heavy duty truck, minimum three quarter ton quad cab, four wheel drive because dualies you're, dualies on the you're back. carrying you're carrying welders and plasma cutters and oxyacetylene tanks, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And it's a daily routine and it's, you know, when, when you're in it, it's cool and all that, but uh, it just got to be a little um, too much. So I, I still though produce artwork um, and I'm doing a project for, uh, for business down in Walnut Creek. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So. That's great. All right. Multi-talented human people right here in front of us, right here. Look at him. Look right at him here. Right there. Yeah. Look at that. Watch him sip his coffee. Look at that. Steady Eddie. Whoa. Dang, that's a skill. That's a skill. Ah, yeah. Just like your warm up. You well, actually, that's that, that should be, you know, step number eight. Yeah. That should be the first step of step. First step. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's coffee. Just, of course, it's just a given, I guess. So, yeah. guys, look, we got a little different, uh, little different deal for you today. We're not going to look at a point. We're going to actually go through what I do every day. I'm on the tennis court. Because I now have this sense, Jeff, that if I don't do this, I'm not going to maybe bring, I'm not maybe going to play well today. Maybe. I, I maybe <laughs> might, I might just screw it up today. So I'm just kind of anal about it. I just do this thing yeah. and I've been doing it for so long that um, I just don't want to stop. And I just kind of feel like habits are the thing that once we start playing that you, got to be able to trust your habits as instincts when you're yeah when you're playing even if you've got well not even i mean once you decide on what your what your tactics are going to be for this match whether it's singles or doubles based on what your opponent or your opponents don't want you to give them okay will be nice if you didn't have to completely consciously think about each and every step along the way right. <laughs> to make that happen to where you I mean, unlike yourself, where you're in the where you're in the art studio and you're manufacturing, but um, oh, listen, the routines in there when you're dealing with oxyacetylene yeah. gas, that is a religion. You, that's going to be a checklist. That's going to be like a oh, pilot yeah, checklist. Yeah, yeah, and th and that is there's no um, shortcutting the checklist. Yeah, uh -uh. good. Yeah, good. So I think this brings up a really cool thing. Even before we get to number one, is yeah. uh, is it the is it the Marines or Army Rangers that they're uh, that uh, they have a philosophy, or or they also have part of their little thing is um, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to your training. Yeah, um, I'm not sure which service it is. Yeah, um, one of them I know has that, that James James Clear in Atomic Habits said something similar, which is um, you don't rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your, I think it was systems or habits. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the same thing here. No, that's, that's good. So look, this is the short court warm up, and a lot of guys kind of poo poo this. They just want to go back and just start hitting from the baseline. I don't like to do that. I just feel like I want to take five minutes and yeah. um, I want to go through this. And, and for me, when I do it, it just, uh, like I said, in fact, let me kind of get to it here. And by the way, guys, I'm going to send out an email here in just, uh, I would say, around 930 this morning, Pacific time zone. 
Um, I've got what you're looking at right now, now in a PDF file, and you can download it for free. Um, and so look for that email about 9.30 this morning. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to read through this, and then, Jeff, let's kind of pick out each one. You can kind of give me your take on each one. Um, but here are my seven short court warm-up habits. And the purpose of the warm-up is obviously to get the body warmed up, but that should happen before you start hitting tennis balls. Without a doubt. Right? Yeah, yeah, so I like to arrive 10 minutes before my scheduled time in the court and do some light jogging forward, side to side, backwards as I windmill my arms and do side to side turns from the waist. All very light. I don't stretch before I play. I like to get things warmed up first. Yeah. And there are some dynamic stretches I do, it, which are kind of leg swings and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so the short court warm up is from the tee. And uh, this is not an opportunity to hit the ball hard. You're not practicing your full swing. Instead, it's all about movement, perfect posture and balance, visual contact with the tennis ball, and a simple target that's a spot above the top of the net's center strap. I like that because it really kind of narrows my focus yeah. onto – on what I'm doing out there, right? So you're prepping super early, waiting for the incoming ball as your feet are moving in place and then tapping it back. So to me, it's like my feet are moving the whole time, right? It's like I'm, I'm just yeah. kind of tiptoeing around. I'm dancing and I don't stop as, the, as I'm about to play it. I just kind of keep the feet moving. And other guys stop. I guess that's fine. But I like to keep the feet going. Um it just it just works for me. Right. So look, no, habit agree. number one. Habit number one for the next five minutes. We're talking about short court warm up. For the next five minutes, the feet do not stop ever. I never stop the feet and get planted, even when I'm perfectly set up as a ball is incoming. I'm constantly moving in place before, during, and after making contact. And this is something Mr. Stowe had us do, where um, he he really was. He was looking more at posture and balance as we were doing yeah. this, you know, and, and we might be chatting a little bit, you know, oh my God, you see the Niners kicked the Rams butt last night. Wasn't that great? You know, but we never really, we never st stood there rooted, facing right. forward, reaching to right. the right. Oh, there's a ball over there, but not moving the feet or the ball's coming right at you. Just tapping it back. We never did yeah. that. Number two, spacing. Instantly create the ideal spatial distance away from the path of the incoming ball so that you could have as little stroke technique as possible as you tap, keyword there, tap the yeah. ball. Yeah. Back. Um, number three, instant racket prep. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. boy. Place oh, the boy. Oh, boy. Oh, girl, whatever. But anyway, place the racket face a foot or two directly behind your ideal contact point. So when we talk about instant racket prep, we're not talking about getting the thing wrapped way around us. We're talking about really just putting it right behind where you think the contact point's going to be. Right. Um, directly behind your ideal contact point for your forehand or backhand, no big racket back. However, the shoulders are getting totally and fully prepped. Yes. That's a big deal. I mean, yeah. you know, it's one thing to put your racket where you think it's going to be a foot or two behind the contact point. But if you're still facing forward or if you're kind of turned, yeah. you're developing a lousy habit for once really you get back. Yeah. yeah. So I, I use uh, when when coaching this, I uh, I ask my you know player to first get in a good ready position facing forward. And then I say, if 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 you weren't allowed to move your arms, how do you and, and you weren't allowed to actually turn your whole body, meaning using your feet to turn to the side, you yeah. have to stay like I go now take your racket back, but you're not allowed to move your arms. And they look at me kind of like the RCA dog for a second. Then they go, oh, I can I can actually turn my trunk and my shoulders around to the side. And then they then they they naturally then start to coil the body a little bit because you have to release some of the tension hinge points at the hip and the knees right so you naturally kind of take this athletic turn and they go there you go that's it yep. don't, don't get don't don't add we're done <laughs> remember <laughs> now, guys now this is all that, about now, yeah now take that and get your spacing you know right which will be much easier because your brain now has a measuring stick 
to work with. It has That's a framework right. to work with. And then things, you know, your feet will start to work automatically then. Well, and, and again, just to kind of underscore why we warm up for the short cord is because once you, once you go back to the baseline, you've now reestablished these habits. I find that if we start to warm up from the baseline, all our brain is consumed about is the timing of the incoming ball. When's it going to arrive? Yeah. And so all these other things before timing um, sometimes don't get, don't get habituated. They don't. Right. So, so with the short court warm up, why I love it is that we're less concerned about timing when the ball is going to arrive and we're actually consciously working on, on all these other great habits. So number four, exhale through contact, time the exhale to the exact moment you make contact. Yep. This, this big deal, rather than a grunt, think about the grunt. I mean, sometimes the grunts are, are in They're They're creating tightness They're creating tension right. rather than an exhale, which is, blowing out actually right. doing the opposite um number five no peaking your heads keep your head still and eyes at contact for a second or two or three after contact no looking up too early number six your target as we mentioned in in the in the opening your target is a spot above the top of the net not a spot on the other side of the net make sure you don't peak p-e-e-k early to see if you've hit that intended spot and my spots always right above the center strap a foot or so maybe whatever two feet the number seven visually pick up the tennis ball as it crosses the net meaning as the ball is going back to your practice partner not when it's coming in so when you make contact there's that moment in time where you're not looking at the ball the ball's left your racket uh your your string bed, you're keeping your eyes, your head still, and you lose visual contact for just a nanosecond there, right? Now make sure you pick it back up as it's crossing the net. You don't want to tap the ball back and look up into the general landscape. Laser focus on the ball before your opponent makes their contact. And so those are the seven things. Now when you move back to the baseline to continue the warm-up, keep these seven habits going. Simply give a little bit more right. racket speed and a little longer finish. Keep, oh, this is in bold. Wow. Keep your grip tension light. Is that important? <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a heavy font there. Okay. Important. Right. Um, yeah. And then I finish up with, I've done this so many times, literally thousands that I don't have to consciously manufacture each of the seven habits. Um, I do like to pick out one at a time for a couple of hits and then move on to to another one once I move back to the baseline. So, look, bottom line here is consistent shot making is really just baking in good habits. So, uh, guys, again, you don't need to take notes on this. I'm going to have this. uh, I'm going to send out an email here in about an hour, and it will have a link to uh, download this PDF. Um, So... I Jeff, would, any have, other any other yeah, thoughts on, yeah, the, on the, why the why the warm up is absolutely crucial yeah. for giving yourself a chance to bring out your best tennis today? For, first, when you start to do this, I would I would recommend that you don't worry about putting spin on the ball. Do do your five minute warm up like this, and just just can you square the racket to the ball? That's it, and and it's cooperative. How, how nice a ball can you deliver to your partner across the net, right? You're warming up. That's the point of this whole deal, right? And then when you move back to the baseline, um, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, we shouldn't, your, your nickname shouldn't be boom, boom with the first ball <laughs> launched out of your racket, right? It's not, we're not going from this to a hundred percent, you know, it should be, you should be hitting a 55, 50% ball, 55% ball. Again, because now we're expanding, right? The turn is going to get a little deeper. The stroke is going to get a little larger. And, and then your whole body is going to be a little bit more deeply involved, right? So, so when, you, when you do back up, again, you're, it's still a progressive uh, warm-up. Build feel, build contact, because now the ball is coming in at a, at a heavier pace. You know, not huge, but still your body, your visual, your timing, all those things have to get in sync, right? So 
as you get good at this, as you get better at it and you start to build this habit, then when you're up at the net and you start doing your short code again, I like to do this. I mix it up now, but I might take 20 hits in a row where I cut the ball. I cut every ball, right? A little backspin, right? Um, because you are in a place that is tailor-made for hitting the short ball, right? If you're coming forward. So it's in your best interest to really learn how to do this well, because now you're actually practicing being able to hit a mild drop shot, you know, getting that front court worked in. So, you, so it's familiar. Um, but if you're not paying attention to it, ah, my drop shot's horrible today. Well, that, that's because you're not paying attention to an opportunity here that is actually building feel. And that requires, let's see, what was that heavy, uh, heavy font you used? Grip tension. You've got to be aware of grip tension and be able to soften the hit incoming ball. Um, so anyway, that's, that's how I expand on that is, is that um, I'll have students, you know, for, I go for, okay, for the next, for the next two minutes. And if I'm, you know, if I'm just watching you know, the next two minutes, I want every ball cut, you know, backspin yeah. with, with a little, with a little shape coming over the net. So they really understand what it is they're trying to get done. So I think um, there's um, there's this thing out there from time to time where players go out and they they just start from the baseline, and within about a minute, there's this thought like, "Oh my God, I don't have my forehand today," and it's like, "Wait a minute," and Mr. Stowe used to just we would piss him off so bad, we would get out there and we would. We would, you know, do the short court thing. That was fine. Then we get start. We get back in the baseline, and, we, and we'd miss one, right? We'd miss right. One. He and, and and we go, hey man, sorry. He go, he goes, sorry. What are you talking about? This is the warm up. You're supposed to miss some balls. Right. Uh, okay, well, okay. I'm sorry. No, don't say yeah. sorry to me. Right. So, I think that look, part of it is that you're going to miss some balls in the warm-up, And if your mind gets into this thing that, Oh my God, I don't have my backhand today. Um, well, that's the self. We need to change that self-talk and you need to change what, <laughs> what the purpose of the warm-up is. You're going to, you're going to ding a few, you're going to miss a couple. Right. And, and the, the whole apology thing out there is, yeah. I don't know if that's a great message you want to send yourself. No, I'm I'm kind of a little bit of a stickler on that. I mean, there's there's occasionally you, know, you wing a ball, it flares off, and okay, sorry, but sometimes it's it's constant, you know. And it's like, okay, wait a second, we've got an underlying we've got an underlying trend here that for the self talk side of it is no bueno. It's yeah, it's like no, 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 no. Okay, so I'm fairly certain if we're warming up, even if it's a match, a tournament match, I'm fairly certain that the guy across the net is not missing on purpose, you know, that that's not his intention. So I don't need to hear, sorry. I don't need to hear any of that because it's like, it's just not, it's not an intention. It, it's okay. You, you flared one. Okay. Yeah. Right. So what? Yeah. Yeah. Big deal. Big deal. So <laughs> I, um, I don't apologize. When like, you know, in the middle of a, you know, at, at a point when I caught the ball, a hair late and I right. put the ball within six inches of the sideline and I look like a God right now. I don't apologize for that. Right. <laughs> I stick not. my chest out. I'd stick my chest out and go yeah. all day long, baby. I can do that all day long. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And Jeff, Jeff's thinking he's looking across the net, the guy going, Hey baby, I'm winning the warm up. I am. I'm That's winning right. the warm up. You're not. So you might as well just retire right now. Yeah. Um, anyway. Morning, Rich. We got rich there. Love watching the exact spin of the ball in the short court warm up. Exactly. Good training for the eye, yeah. eye ball, eye hand, con you know, uh, coordination. All right, guys. Well, look. Um, hope this has been helpful. And don't poo poo the warm up. It's it's just it's another opportunity to create good habits. Yeah. And consistent shot making is about is about good habits. And so, so nail this thing, nail the first five minutes every day you're out there in the short court warm up. When you back up, I mean, when I back up, Jeff, I, I'm just thinking more about, like you said, I like to take the first minute when I back up of really at the most a 50% swing speed. Yeah. And I want to, I want to continue that habit. And for me, the one habit that I really need to, 
that gives me the most confidence is that is that no peaking. And and so I love yeah. to I mean a lot of players, yeah, it's not that big a deal for them. They just naturally don't. But um I need to feel that that first minute, especially right. because I want to make sure that once <laughs> once we start playing that that habit is happening from the very yeah. first point, especially exactly. in a big match. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, there you go. Guys, hope this has been helpful. Uh, any comments, remarks, questions, feedback uh, down below in the comments area. Love to read those and respond. If you want to keep the conversation private, certainly we can do that. Just shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. Jeff is over at Jeff at Jacklich 365.com. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he checks his email about once every 35 days. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Just to make sure that yeah. uh, I try to fly under the radar. <laughs> right. <laughs> Incoming. Um, yeah. Oh, and guys, a qu another quick reminder um, that if you're looking for a tournament, a senior tournament, age group tournament. Um, I got one for you. It would be the 2024 Pacific Coast Senior Tournament in Berkeley, yeah. California at the world famous, not the NorCal famous, but the world famous Berkeley yeah. Tennis Club. Um, one of the best places to play tennis. Oh, my God. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So, look, yours truly running the player experience this year. Um, and we're we're leveling that thing up, that experience to the concierge yeah. level, Jeff. Um, I love it. It's gonna be fun. So, look, guys, if you um, if you know what you're doing with the USCA website for tournaments, um, <laughs> wow, that's good because a lot of players who play a lot of tournaments still scratch their head. They go over like, how the hell do I find that tournament there? Right. Um, but if you're not, just shoot me an email, Brent at webtennis.com. And um, I can help you um, go to the tournament Navigate. website. Navigate Navigation. There. Yeah. The rough waters. <laughs> you click on the wrong thing. Next thing you know, you're, you're buying uh, Tupperware on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. All right. All right, guys. I better get out of here before I lose it totally. Um, <laughs> um, all right, uh, guys. Time for us to all get out there, help someone else have a great day. Uh, see you guys again next time. Boom.